Welcome to the Inspired Action Podcast. This is where we have motivational, inspiring conversations and interviews that we hope you'll enjoy listening to. If you're interested in creating more balance in your life, understanding your five element energetic nature, finding the path of greatest ease, or releasing the baggage of this lifetime and discovering ancient alchemy that can help you fly in your life. Join us and other inspired actioneers on this alchemical transformational journey. So the question today is, are you an activist, an anarchist, or an alchemist? That's the question we're going to ask on the Inspired Action Podcast. We're going to ask you to look deep at yourself and those around you and see if you can come up with an answer. My name is Jay. This is Pod 78, and I'm with my co-host, as always, Lita Herman. Welcome back, Inspired Actioneers. So do you want to save the world or save yourself? Or do you just want the world to leave you alone? So today we're going to talk about activism in all of our lives. It's such a crazy amount of things going on right now. We're going to look at it from the alchemist. We're going to look at it from the activist. We're going to look at it from this a little bit from the anarchist and see where do you fit in today? With so many people around the world marching in the streets, protesting and expressing themselves in so many ways, our question today is, what's an alchemist to do? We're going to try to be a little bit serious today. We're going to try because some of these events are really, really big, but we're going to have this Taoist perspective and we're just going to see what happens when we talk about this. You know, it is a little bit serious, but as always, you try to find a little bit of humor in some (laughs) of the things, but it is a very, very challenging times right now. Yes, and there's a sense of seriousness of these issues of the world right now. So, Jay, what is an alchemist to do? Well, Lita, that's a great question, and that's how we got here today. So we're going to try to break this up into two podcasts. This is a very challenging time for myself being, you know, an alchemist and all a little bit of an activist, but I want to do more, but I feel like this pull of what's going on in the world. So we're going to talk about that in these next two podcasts, and we're just going to kind of explore and see if this touches something inside of you, something that resonates. Either you're doing something, not doing something, want to do something, afraid to do something, fear is a big part of this. So we're going to explore that, Lida. I thought that would be a great way to talk about these these big topics today. Yes, and but before we continue, we want to update all our listeners on our new project. Yes, we've been working, 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 you know, we've been taking this time of the COVID-19 lockdown, but we have not stopped, Lita. We work, 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 but we love our work. And so we've been very, very busy. We're just, you know, so grateful that we have a thriving business on on many levels here. And we has definitely pulled our attention. So if you've missed our podcast a little bit, we're back. We've been working on some great topics that are coming up, some interviews, different things. We have not been, you know, sitting around eating bonbons. (laughs) We have been working. And the first thing is... We're launching maybe this week, maybe by the time you hear this podcast, hopefully. It's so exciting. We're starting a new online community of learning, the Alchemy Learning Center. And so we want to keep everyone motivated and captivated with learning. And so you can find a link in the show notes of this podcast. So check it out. We will have more stuff to announce in the next couple of podcasts. It's going to be the summer of expanding. So if you dig the Inspired Action Podcast, if you like the things we're talking about, this is really for you. We're going to do five elements. We're going to do nine palaces. We're going to do alchemy. We're going to be doing all kinds of really, really cool things in this this learning center that we've been working on for about two years. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and it's finally coming out. It's being born. <laughs> yeah, really. <laughs> um, so yes. But all right. So let's get back to today. We'll talk more about that as it as it births yes. but we're really excited if you can't tell and again challenging times we're in right now specifically for me as i wanted to talk about it it was the five elements and nine palaces which i'm really into yes so the metal palace is really important in this conversation yes, because it is we call the metal palace the global palace we also call it the travel palace but this is a global time. We have a global pandemic. We yeah. have marching globally around the world for different reasons and similar reasons. So there's a lot going on globally. Yeah, and I think if you're trying to understand what's going on in the world, five elements, nine palaces, nine stages of alchemy, it's like a roadmap, you know, and that's how we're kind of looking at this whole thing. And with the metal palace, the travel palace, you know, we travel every day. We travel in the news, CNN, BBC, Dare I say the F word news or entertainment news, I like to say it. Yes, I'm a little... The the F word being Fox? Yes, yes. (laughs) Just in case anyone didn't get that. There I go, I dropped the first F bomb right there. (laughs) 
Okay, so the F news. Uh, but they do stir up emotions. They charge us with these emotions. They want us to feel like instant, right there, creating these emotions. It can be a little addictive, and I know a lot of people are struggling with this. It's this hit of adrenaline that people get. It's this surge. They want more. They want more. They want more. And let me tell you, all of the news outlets, they're supplying. You know, I have had my taste of this for the first time. I never really got into Twitter. And when things were happening really quick and fast, Jay, I was like, oh, let me check out Twitter. Oh, my gosh. You can see everything in real time. Actually, you could see it before the news people see it. Before the news people see it. It's crazy. It is crazy. And that can be a little addictive for a lot of people who are, A, not working, home, looking for distractions. They need to, like, know what's going on. We're obsessed, and I'm going to say throughout the world, with knowing what's going on. Immediately. Immediately. And That's already too slow. Yeah, exactly. That word is too big. A second ago. (laughs) That's right. That's old news. (laughs) That's old news. All right. So no matter what side of the issues you're on, and by the way, this is not a political podcast. You know, we could go into politics, but really... Really, this is a spirituality podcast, and there are times in life when the outer world is demanding our attention so strongly, it's like knocking on our door. So even the monk sitting in meditation on a mountain somewhere is going to have a hard time ignoring what's happening. I mean, would that monk not know that the world is in a global pandemic if that person had any connection with anyone or any news source? Yeah, I'm telling you, I would love to be that monk and not have any connection, but they probably do have some person or some way, some, you know, radio, or Wi-Fi. Yeah, actually, when I was um, on Mount Huashan, a very spiritual mountain in China that, you know, was we were climbing with an alchemy group. It was really exciting. We we stopped halfway up at this temple and stayed the night. They had a dish there. They oh, yeah. they were getting internet. They yeah. were totally tapped into the news. And these Taoist monks sit in caves for months at a time. Yeah. But they knew what was going on. They were up to date. They, they had no problem. And maybe because they're in the present moment. Yeah. And this is present moment drama drama yeah and you know it, it is something that it does not i don't there's very few people on the planet who are have been spared the the political unrest in their country where no matter where they are yeah. the pandemic no matter where they are or just some of the socioeconomic events going on where i don't no matter where you are i think yeah. everybody is a little bit rocky with maybe the asterisk exception of new zealand Go Hobbits. Yes. But <laughs> they got it going on, but they're they're doing okay. They should be an example for the rest of us. All right. So that makes me think, you know, we've talked in the past about the role of the hero, the saint, or the alchemist. And let's pl- apply that today to what's going on in the world. Absolutely. I, I, I think for each person out there, they have to look at it from their own lens, their own perspective, in terms of who you are and how are you personally handling the crises in the world? And what about your circle around you? Where yes. are you? on these topics, these issues, these challenges. When we think about those three, you know, the hero is the activist who goes out and saves the world. The heroes are the protesters marching in the streets or maybe even the lawyers working for justice in the courts. And the saint is like the monk who works on saving souls without fighting to make the world any different. It's kind of a Mother Teresa role. You know, she was someone who was just present with suffering. But you could also say, you know, there's an anarchist component in all of these issues. And that could be like the saint as well, because it's like, let's let it everything be. You know, there's this don't tread on me. Which is um, a little bit slanted movement. towards this libertarian. Yeah. And I'm not sure if they're truly anarchists, but yes. that was my impression. Yeah. So so people who don't want to be told what to do, and they're not agreeing with the government's, you know, way of handling things. So they can be the anarchist anarchist side of the debate, and they don't feel like it's their responsibility to protect people by making rules and regulations that infringe on other people's rights. And that's just, you know, how we are looking that's right. at it's it. our interpretation. We're trying to look at it from a Taoist perspective, from an alchemy perspective, from a per- perspective that, you know, you don't have to be just one yes. of these things. Yes. 
So it's hard to say, you know, the saint and the anarchist are the same, but in a way they both, you know, ignore that outer world. You know, I think for the saint, it's all about the inner world, not the outer world. Yes. And the difference is the saint might care about other people, although that's not actually a requirement, since there's many out there who are sitting in caves in the mountains who really don't give a bleep about anyone. And that's not a bad thing. That's not a judgment. That's just what's going on. And then maybe you have the anarchist who might care more about themselves, or that's the perception Although it's more like they don't want their rights infringed upon. They don't tell them what to do. Tell them, you know, like this is their experience on this planet. The government could be wrong. They don't really care about anything or not. Yeah. I know this is a big question mark. So now for the alchemist, it's somewhere in the middle. Sometimes being more like the hero and sometimes being more like the saint or the anarchist but all the time living in the mystery. Right. And, you know, we almost called that this podcast episode living in the mystery because that's the theme I really want to. We're going to start a whole new kind of uh, season. season on this. Yes. And that's going to be a big part of it. You know, the alchemist is much more about being inspired, doing what you're ma- motivated to do, no matter what that is. But before we go into that, let's hold on. Let's back up just a tiny bit. Lita, can you talk for a second about the Taoist perspective on the inner and the outer chapters? Because we haven't really covered that too much in the podcast yet. When we're talking and having conversations, it's always something that's this thread that I think we understand, you know, obviously on our tiny little level here. But, um, you know, the big perspective is you could spend a lifetime studying this. But for this podcast, let's talk. Can you talk a little bit about the inner and outer? Yes. Well, as for the hero, we run in the streets and we try to do something about what we don't like in the world. We go out and we have outer world battles, politics, pandemics, natural disasters, you name it. And the heroes believe we're fighting the good fight. And that's what matters. The streets are the hero's battlegrounds right now. And in Taoism, they often group the Taoist books into what we call inner chapters and outer chapters. So that just means sections of the book that talk about the outer world and what needs to be done to make the world a better place. So Taoists really did focus on the outer world at times. And then they have these chapters that relate to the inner battles of life. So that would be the saint, you know, where you're retreating inward and fighting these inner battles of feelings and not being distracted by the outer world. So, you know, Would you forgive those perpetrators of violence and love those who are the victims? This is about the inner chapters of the Taoist sacred texts. So the inner chapters talk about how to stop being distracted by the outer world so you can focus on your spiritual evolution. And then there's the alchemist. The alchemist holds this unique position in Taoism. They're not priests, really. They're not politicians. They don't run away from society. They actually believe you need to be part of society in order to have experiences and challenges so you can grow and evolve. And, you you know, they don't think that you should let society get to you. They think you need to self-cultivate, which means be a little selfish, put your own cultivation first, which, Which is not always the hero's way or necessarily the saint's way either, the thinking of either of those. Yes. So there's often a discussion maybe or inner discussion about the conflicts that arise between the inner and the outer worlds for people who are on this journey of self-cultivation working on their spiritual evolution. So the most famous writings of the inner and outer chapters are by famous Taoists like Lao Tzu, who wrote the Tao Te Ching, and Zhuangzi, who was the one who dreamed he was a butterfly and then wondered whether he was actually a butterfly and now dreaming that he was a human. Or that he was a human dreaming as a butterfly about being a human yes. about a butterfly. Right. <laughs> Many layers over. Coming out of that cocoon. <laughs> so some of the most famous ancient alchemists refused their emperor's insistent invitations to be a in politics, to be a minister in the government, because they realized that they couldn't do their personal spiritual work while doing those outer world politics. You know, Ge Hong was one of the most famous, and there was another one named Lu Don Bin. And we've talked about these these uh, alchemists before. You know, in modern times, we could say it's very challenging to be an activist and an alchemist at the same time. Yeah, I would say that these podcasts are about how to walk that fine line. It's kind of a 
uh, alchemical razor's edge, so to speak. I mean, on one hand, we're in the midst of this global pandemic, health crisis. Everyone is really focused on the health palace. We have all this civil unrest in the aftermath of the death of George Floyd here in the United States. We also have the economic standstill, police reform, businesses on, businesses on the teeter of going out of business, unemployment record numbers, and climate crisis on epic scale all over the world, environmentally challenges. We seem to be teetering on the brink of total collapse. Things are roiling, things are boiling in the world today. So what do you do? It seems like we're in an alchemical cauldron, the roiling and the boiling of all these <laughs> things, all these things in the recipe of crazy chaos. I mean, it is a chaotic alchemical cauldron going on of transformation and change is you know that's what it's all about change is coming yeah i saw this t-shirt that i really 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 want to get it says we are the asteroid okay (laughs) meaning we're gonna blow up the earth we're the we are the threat to the earth the humans that's right so um i think that that's this you know we we joke but wow this is things are really we need to like slow down, reel it in. So I know that a lot of Taoist things, they're like, things are meant to happen. They're just meant to happen. And we need to let them play out. Yes. I mean, how does that go into this this conversation of hero, saint, alchemist, activist, anarchist, alchemist, like this whole, you know, balancing that we're all trying to do? Yeah. And that's why we have that outer chapter concept, because even when you're totally keeping to yourself and ignoring the outer world, you know, meditating, you know, being spiritual, whatever you're doing, self-cultivating, tai chi, qigong, yeah, then the outer world comes and persistently knocks on your door, knocks on your door, demands your attention in ways that you can't ignore. It demands change. It demands action. And 2020 could be that time, a time of great change, not just in the United States where we're living, but worldwide yeah it was adapt or die yeah how do we find the harmony if everything is in discord right now so it's not necessarily personal alchemy which this particular podcast is about it's maybe a society's alchemy alchemy is transformation i like that society's yeah. alchemy that's yeah. what this is really so no matter where you stand on these issues we all know we can see things that are happening in front of us changes are happening where do you stand you might think change happens all the time and and yes, that is a valid point because we're in this present moment. We don't have the past. We don't have the future. We only have what we are right now. I think we're just confronting some growing pains of the planet as yes. a human entity. Yeah. You know, we need to transform, evolve, change. And these are all the things that are going on right now. So you need to look at where you are in these events. Mm-hmm. Totally. Are you being quiet? Are you just hiding in your house, not doing, not saying, just consuming news, just consuming media? Are you thinking? Are you self-cultivating? Are you helping others? This is radical, fast change, which is really the type of transformation that is associated with alchemy. And every chemist knows that you can have a chemical reaction that's slow and happens over a long period of time. But if you want fast acting change, you need a catalyst. So what is the catalyst right now besides all those things I just mentioned? Yes. Well, you know, if you want to create an alchemical elixir for our society, an elixir that prompts huge sweeping changes, well, then the catalyst needs to come. And we've had that catalyst. Yeah. You know, a catalyst, something that speeds up that chemical reaction, but it's not consumed by the reaction. So here's the question I just thought of. We need to really think about it. How can we be the catalyst for change at something that may not seem right to us or wrong? But remember, no right or no wrong, but not be consumed ourselves by it. Yes. And wow, so that's such a big. I know. So catalytic change. If that doesn't sum up the effect of George Floyd's death on our society, I don't know what does. I mean, that's that's just so many socioeconomic disadvantages, police reform, pol- governments, you know, uh, the peaceful protests. I can go on and on and on about that whole thing, not to mention a human right violation and just the the heart wrenching having to watch that that poor person died in video almost in real time. That affected the whole world. Whole world. Whole world at eight minutes and 46 seconds. I think that what it was, or just let's just say under nine minutes. Wow. That was the nine minutes that 
change the world on a very human level. But remember, it's not just the catalyst that matters. We look at the George Floyd incident and we think about that as this huge catalyst. But remember, the ingredients that were already there are just as important. That's part of the chemistry experiment. Those are called the reactants. And I had to look this up because chemistry was like eons ago for me. But anyway, (laughs) but that word reactants was really interesting too. We had a lot of ingredients that were put into this current day chemistry experiment. The alchemical cauldron of discord. That's what I'm going to call it. There's the backdrop of COVID-19 and that so many people were out of work with time on their hands, you know, socially or physically distancing, stressed, maybe even feeling like nothing matters more than justice. Maybe it's triggering some wood of some unfairness. Yes. You know, and also uh, maybe not working as much. Yes. There so many, there's 40 million plus people in the United States yes. and many, 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 many tens of million more people in the world that are just economically challenged right now. And I like Trevor Noah from The Daily Show. He had a great take on these ingredients that were there for this alchemical he had, mixture. He called them like dominoes, I think. Yeah, he talked about all these different things. Like he said that, you know, Amy Cooper incident was one of the dominoes in the upheaval of all this civil unrest. That's the woman with the dog in Central Park. And although that incident did not end with a violence of any kind, you know, thankfully, it was a huge wake-up call for many, many people about yeah, racism. Definitely. That's, I think for that particular incident, for me personally, it was racist or anti-racist. Like that, there's no more gray area. Yes. This is how you, you know, even if you think you're not a racist, if you're doing certain things or acting a certain way, which includes not acting, not saying, not speaking up for people. So it's racist or anti-racist. That's it. Like right now, that for me was ignited for sure. And then there were the all of these, you know, police deaths, you know, these these alleged murders of Breonna Taylor and the teenage runner Ahmoud Arbery in Georgia. You know, and the list goes on and oh, on, so person many. after it's, person. It's so sad. You know, and we'll put a link in the show notes to Trevor's um daily show talk because it was really great and unfortunately there's so many out there we can't even list them today but because that'll also add more fuel to this alchemical cauldron this craziness it'll just boost the chemical elixir of change transforming all these reactants all these chemicals just created this almost like how about alchemical bomb ready to burst Yes. Ready to blow. Yes. And actually, you know, we'll put a picture of Gohong's actual alchemical cauldron, the physical cauldron yeah, in the show that. notes as well, because, you know, maybe you just need a visual of what we're talking about. It's this beautifully painted giant cauldron. And it's like, that's what the society is in right now. I mean, we've had some other, you know, uh, in recent years, the previous civil unrest campaigns going back to, you know, all the way back to the Civil War yes. of all these different things. You know, we have the, then more recently the success of the gay and lesbian equality movement, the result of the Me Too movement, which has just been widespreading throughout the world, another big movement. And I think that just laid this pavement of transformation in the way we think and view. We need to adapt. We need to expand, transform our views, include equality for every person on the planet. Yes. So society has been making these huge sweeping changes to how it views women, people of color, sexual orientation, gender. Um, You know, all of this has happened in a very short period of time, like 10, maybe 20 years or so. You know, it's really been a blip in in the long term scale. You know, since we're going on this alchemical cauldron chemistry thing, it's not just the political events. How about the human rights? And now let's talk for a tiny bit about technology. Think if iPhones or video or body cams weren't so prolific in our society, we couldn't see what is happening. Now we're getting a little bit addicted to these things. So I say, Lita, we add technology as another one of those ingredients in the cauldron. The cauldron, yeah. yes. Because without know, cameras, none of this would have been, have been shown to the world yes. about all these events that's been going on. Yes, the videos make it undeniable. They stir up our emotions. You know, even a video is only one angle, really, one vantage point, but it's harder to dispute the evidence of that video. And it's certainly easy to feel 
outraged when you see it. And how about the uh, so many hundreds of people who have these tragic tragic events happen who don't have videos or body cams or any kind of evidence. I mean, I'm just going to throw out Sandra Bland. You know, I, I remember hearing that story. It was just like so... Heartbreaking. Heartbreaking. And yeah. there's just so many. But I mean, think, I just want, I'm throwing these names, we're throwing these names out. We're mentioning these these humans that lived with us not that long ago. So I want you to think, I'm, I'm, we're, we're really just asking you to think, ask yourself better questions about where you are in the world. Whether you agree with these changes happening in our society or not, they have been happening progressively and very quickly in the big scheme of things. These changes are very rapid. And that's the definition of alchemy. It's rapid change. So in a way, it shouldn't be surprising that on the day that, you know, George Floyd died, something very powerful happened. The world shifted like on its axis. The world's heart were breaking for a large percentage of people. Now, there are some people out there who were like, didn't care. They were like, whatever. They had evil thoughts. And that's just my opinion. I mean, so, but I think overall... It was very clear that this touched a lot of people. And something new was awakened it was inside like a many of us. It was yeah. like a ripple yeah. of humanity and just love for, for all of us. And the desire for change was awakened in many of us. Absolutely. A conviction that maybe we sort of felt earlier, but now it was a true conviction yeah. that something needs to change. And that ripple went out into the world. It went all over the world. It touched everything every country in this world and it's still rippling yeah so i think that when we think about even maybe some of those groups who are opposed to the black lives movement when they saw that video i I don't know maybe they agreed maybe they didn't maybe they accepted it maybe they didn't but they had to have no unknown on some level that that was wrong on a human level but it's so polarizing and it did happen very quickly and i think that's that that reactant And that chemical reaction that just blew up. And, you know, it's interesting. I thought it was interesting that there was a very short period of time where everyone agreed that something terrible had happened. And then it quickly polarized into people who were arguing different sides. Well, there really wasn't a side to take. I know. Um, Absolutely. That's our opinion. In terms of like someone who would say that 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 George Floyd should have died. Nobody said that. But everyone, you know, was outraged about his death, but then it polarized. And then some were outraged about the looting. And, the potential of looting hadn't even started yet. Right. And civil unrest, you know, and so others continued and just to... just for the record, I do not think that death is the punishment for looting. Exactly. Okay. Right. So, who, so we know when those, those, the one who shall not be named tweeted to the world when the looting starts, the shooting starts. Is that not a threat of violence? Yes. So even when everyone seems to agree that the act itself, George Floyd's death, was abhorrent, it immediately became polarized to these extremes. And that's a really important topic for today's podcast. So if we look at the situation from maybe 40,000 feet above, hey, maybe that's why we have the new Space Force, (laughs) we can see clearly the polarization. It's not just the United States. It's the world. I think this is not just a United States issue this is a world issue it's a, it's between the polarization of conservative liberal you know all these different things it's the f news it's the cnn you know it's also in other countries they're having such similar 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 discord you know the uk italy russia turkey brazil i'm probably leaving a couple out there people are being polarized they're being separated they're being divided without the aid of their government that's all i can say i don't want to get political but that's just my Two cents worth. Maybe instead of saying conservative versus liberal, which is really a U.S. description, we could say it's the classic disagreement about the responsibility of society to take care or not of the members of society. And how would we go about doing that, if at all? Well, that's the New Hampshire live free or die motto. A little New Hampshire might have got it right. You know, do it, Do we as a society take care of the community as a whole? Or we, do we say, don't tread on me, reject government, do not impose laws, personal freedoms, protest in the streets? Or do we just go sit in a cave 
and right. meditate all day. Right. So this polarization seems to be between those who are worried about others taking away, away what's rightfully theirs and those who want to make sure everyone is being taken care of on some basic level. And you know the other F word we haven't said today? What? Fear. Fear. Fear fuels our alchemical cauldron of discord. Okay, people are afraid. It's exactly what you just said. I mean, are they afraid they're losing out or something being taken away or someone's going to hurt them or they're going to hurt someone? It's fear. Yes, and it's it's the individual versus the community as a whole. Yeah, and also throw in judgment, judgmental, yes. judgmentalness. I yes. don't really know what word, one of those three. Judgment, <laughs> judgmental, judgmentalness. You know, if we take the judgment out of it, actually, human beings have been fighting over resources since the dawn of time. Yeah, I mean, this is human rights scale on a bigger issue since maybe hunters and gatherers were yes. out there yeah, so it's kind doing of, their thing. It's almost like the human condition. It's survival of the fittest, us versus them. And Think it doesn't about it. have to be that way. Yeah. The people who dislike the Black Lives Matter movement, they likely feel threatened by the possibility of change. And they might feel like they're going to lose something, like someone's going to take something away That's from them. That's the fear. Yes. And so something they have, they feel that they've earned, maybe because of the color of their skin or that they pay taxes. If we could just unite. Or that person who is the head of the United States said so. Right. <laughs> the one that shall not be named. If we could just unite instead of divide right now, the power of unity would be huge. At the same time, we've also learned since the dawn of time that communities, when they help each other, can be more successful and survive better than individuals working entirely on their own. Survival becomes much more challenging when you're on your own in the wilderness. I mean, that's what all those survivor reality shows are about. I mean, yeah. I don't really watch them, but um, if they're very popular. Popular. Why? Because we love to see how hard it is. I know my mother's new favorite is naked and alone. <laughs> oh when they gosh. throw you on an island, two people, <laughs> guess what? They're naked and alone and they have to survive. <laughs> Okay, that's the reality TV show that's out there in the world. In actuality, our modern day society has a huge history of helping those in need. We know that helping others is a huge component to our own happiness in general. So in fact, it's been scientifically proven that your body releases happy hormones, endorphins, you know, when you help others. And they even have a name for it. It's helper's high. Like, is that like runner's high? Yes. Like runner's I, high. I'm very familiar with both, I hope. I think I am. Yes. You know, I love a good runner's high, but I love a good helper's high. Maybe that's the wooden me. I don't know. It is the wood in you. Helping others is the wood virtue. It's benevolence. Yeah, I just think it feels great to do something for someone else who maybe can't stand up for themselves or need a little help. And this polarization that we're talking about, no matter which side you're on, we really don't care. There's no right or wrong. There's no good or bad. But this brings us to our next topic of the podcast, Lita. I, right or wrong, good or bad. If you don't believe in anything, it's all an illusion. How do you decide, alchemist, anarchist, or activist? Well, it's interesting that you brought up good or bad, right or wrong, because that is a high level of alchemy. That's stage five of alchemy that uh, you're talking we just, about. Okay, we just spoiled the next podcast there. <laughs> You, yeah, I gave away. I did the, the big that reveal. That was the big reveal. That's right. <laughs> All right. So forget we're going to talk about the fifth stage of alchemy. I have such a big mouth. <laughs> you got to wait a week now for whatever this. But that is going to be the focus of the next podcast on this big these big questions because as we move through the world we're all still here you know how can we learn how can we expand how can we grow how can we look at these challenges and not be afraid how can we not be judgmental how can we not insert ourselves into someone else's journey someone and, else's experience yes and how do we if we would if we would like be the alchemist which is somewhere in between the hero and the saint you know how do we behave as as people who um, take inspired action. So there you go. We're going to leave you with what's an alchemist to do. There you go. So ponder that question and tune into the next podcast and we will have some Continue more information. Continue the discussion. All right. Okay. Be safe. Bye. You've been listening to the Inspired Action Podcast and you've reached the end. Woohoo! Why not celebrate a little bit and click that subscribe button right there. We love having you with us on this journey and we want it to continue. You can also rate and review this podcast. And if you have already, thank you so much. We read all reviews and your reviews help other people find this podcast as well. 
You can also be a part of this podcast yourself by submitting a voice recording message and emailing it to us at Lita at Inspired Action Podcast.com or Jay at Inspired Action Podcast.com. And if you want, you can join our Facebook group or follow us on Instagram. Join us next week for another Inspired Action Conversation. And thank you for listening. Thanks for listening. And remember to hug the dog.